how can we motivate our children to come for practice? How can we motivate our children to love the instrument? How can we motivate our children to do well at school? How can we motivate our children to give hand in the household? Motivation is a word which repeats itself a lot in today's world. We almost like want our kids to be self-motivated. We want them to motivate themselves. We want them to be willing to do the thing that we want them to do. And then we think it's good for them to do without us needing to ask. That could be quite nice and uh, ideal and easy in an ideal world. But that's never the case. It was never the case with us parents when we were younger or when we were children. So in a way, that's the way that the world goes round and round and round all these years. Dr. Shinichi Suzuki was very wise and sensitive and deep in his insight to realize that the way the children learn language, their mother tongue, embodies in it the tools and ingredients to provide learning any skill in an easy and pleasant way. When we learn something in a pleasant way, then we are motivated to continue doing it. If I learn anything, not just violin, piano, or school studies, anything that I learn that is being met with some pleasant feeling, be it a praise, be it a nod, be it acknowledgement, uh, moments of fun, joy, anything like this will make me want to repeat as an adult, and definitely as a child. So if we go and look at the ingredients of mother tongue approach, it's not just the ability to speak the mother tongue of the child. It's not just the ability of a Japanese child learning to speak Japanese. It's not just the ability of a child to learn to play the violin. It's not just the ability of a child to learn to ride his bicycles, to tie his shoes, to eat, to, um, to do anything which has been in the environment. We are already aware that the ability is there. For us who have been in the Suzuki world for quite some time, be it short or long, be it parents or teachers, we know that every child has got an unlimited potential, unlimited potential. And if we don't know it yet, because we have just started, you have just, you have just started with your kids um, just a short while ago to be a part of the Suzuki movement, you will definitely hear it or heard it already from your teachers, from other parents, you read it in books, you definitely saw it in other children performing you could see the unlimited potential because being a Suzuki parent, you are not saying anymore, oh, this child has got talent. This child was born with such a talent, he's going to do really well in his piano studies, cello studies, violin studies, or any studies. By now you know that talent is something that you are creating. You're helping a child to create. So in a way, the concept that your child and other children, among other children, has got unlimited potential is quite known to you. I go back to the motivation topic, which I presented at the beginning. You want to make sure that your child at some point will want to do the work by themselves. 
So even though at the beginning you provide the environment, which contains the listening, the practice, lessons, group lessons, concerts, and so on, you are holding the, vi the vision that one day when your child gets to this stage, he will be able to pick up the instrument by his own will, or they will want to do the practice because they know that practice brings them this level of mastery. And none of us is in this um, activity because we want to stay there forever. We want to pass on to the children the ability to become independent and loving what they're doing. And when it happens, we don't know. For some it happens sooner, for some it happens later, but it happens to everybody. The thing is that we are wishing that our kids will become self-motivated. We want them to become motivated. We want them to have the will and desire to move on to the next step, to succeed, to acquire knowledge, to acquire ability. And they will because the thirst to learn is something which is innate in us. Without it, we cannot grow. Without it, we cannot survive. So how do we do it? How do we pass on to our children this self-motivation? And I'd like to add one more self word. Together with self-motivation comes the self-discipline. The discipline is something which can come from outside. We, we see around us children, uh, parents who are trying to discipline their children. Our wish, of course, is for our children to have their own discipline, to know what they should do, when they should do it, and how they should do it. We want our children to have their own self-motivation. So the topic is how do we pass on to them? Will it happen by us forcing them? No. Now, some parents might say, actually, in our culture or in our family tradition, parents are forcing the children to do things and the children abide by the rules. Eventually, they learn to do it. The question is, do they enjoy doing it? Because we know that children, most of the time, will do what the parents are asking, uh, asking them to do, even if they don't like doing it. There are lots of reasons for them to do it. They don't want to go into trouble. They want to get some good credit points from the parents. And that's what they've, they've been doing since the beginning. So they are obeying to the parents, which is really important. And many times they forget what they want to do. And they forget how to want to do it from their heart, how they can make this thing coming from the heart. We want our children to love music. We want our children to love listening to music, to love making music. And therefore we are expecting that one day they will motivate themselves to do more of it so that they will increase the love. So what's the role of the parents in this process of creating or developing or helping a child evolve into a self-motivated person. We'll talk about it in a minute, but before we go there, I would like just to remind us that if a child becomes self-motivated in learning the piano or the violin or the cello or any other instrument, the child is not just developing self-motivation in this. The child is developing self-motivation in any endeavor. So by helping the child developing motivation, self-motivation, we are actually giving the child a gift of self to be self-motivated in everything that they pick up to do, in everything that their heart calls them to do. So it will be schoolwork, 
it'll be their their work, their job, their vocation later, it will be their family, it will be the commitment to the action, their commitment to everything that they do, the commitment to the activity. So they will be self-motivated and they will enjoy doing it and therefore they will be able to put their heart. So let's go back to music because we know that we are helping children develop their character through the music. Character first, ability second, the words of Dr. Shinichi Suzuki. So if I want my child to be, to love something, I have to check with myself if I love it. I cannot ask a child to love something if I don't have any relationship with this thing. Now, I would, I, I want to um, just stop here and just say that in some rare cases, you can see the children come out of a house that had no idea about a topic and the child developed this topic. Like some children are raised in house that don't, won't have appreciation to art. They will have appreciation to other things, maybe science, but not art. Art is not something that you see in, in the household, any kind of art, not, not uh, visual art, not performing art, not music. This, it is, is not something which is in the atmosphere, in the environment of this house. This child might one day come across a piece of art or go to a museum or meet somebody who does music, who plays music, or somebody who does art, and will, they, it will ignite the interest. And with the interest will come the desire to do it. But that's quite rare and doesn't happen a lot. What happens more is when you see, you see children developing interest in something that was in their environment. It's not foreign to them. So if art and or the love of music is in the household, very naturally it will become a part of the lives of the child. Like many children would say to parents, I don't want to play the piano or I don't want to play the violin. I don't like practicing, therefore I don't want to do it. And parents will shrug and will say very naturally, sorry, honey, this is what we do in our home. In our house, we do music. In our house, we appreciate the sound of a piano or a violin. When you leave home one day, you might not want to do it. And we, we know that when children do it for many years, day in and day out, and especially when they start at a young age, as they do in the Suzuki way, when they leave home, they will still, still love music. They will still go to concerts. They will still, still make music by themselves. So music will become a very important part of their life. And that's because we did not give up on them, even when they did not like it. So the message here is for you parents to remember that you don't have to think too much and too hard about what can I do in order to pass it on to my child? What you can do, which will most likely be more, it will become easier, easier for you, is just think how you make yourself or how you help yourself to like this thing that you would like the child to like. If you enroll to Suzuki program, I don't know at what, at what stage you are at, but no matter what stage you are at, if you are in a more advanced stage now and your child is playing book two, three, four, five, and six, seven, you, you have been through this before. If you're just at the beginning stages, if your child is a twinkler or you're in book one, then you are just starting practicing now. The good thing is that you can tell yourself, the way that I approach the practice will become the way that my child will approach the practice. Because I cannot tell my child, go and do your practice now. I can, but it won't hold for a long time. And it won't make my child be a happy person who is independent in doing it. 
I would like to make myself love what my child, what I want my child to love. And my child will pick up from me. Now it's a process that doesn't happen straight away outside. So you need to trust the process. You need to trust that it's happening somewhere in the heart of the child, somewhere in the soul of the child, somewhere in the life force of the child. Like in all the stories that you hear Suzuki talk, tell about, it's the same thing that happens to the plant. You put a seed and you have no idea what's going to come of this seed, but you keep watering, nurturing, loving the seed. And then with some uh, mysterious curiosity, you wait to see the results. Same, I encourage you to do the same with your child. Don't judge what you see day by day. Keep the big picture in your heart. Keep the big picture in your vision. Have the big vision for your child. Believe in the ability of your child as much as your teacher is believing. Because really Suzuki meant it, and he, I know it for, of teaching so many years in so many cultures, that every child has got an unlimited potential. So back to you, parent. Make sure that you come to the practice with an open heart. Make sure that you observe your child. You see what's good for the child at any particular moment, as long as you know the vision, as, no, as long as you know where you're going to get and aim for it, but don't ask for it on a very single day. So it's like you're holding the big picture for your child. You're holding the love for music, the love for the instrument, the love for the effort of your child is putting every single day. And you make sure that you vocalize it. You give your child the acknowledgement, tell him that you see you see the struggle, you see the effort, which is more important than seeing the results. And yes, praise the results, but not as much as you praise the effort, the work that is being put. This is how you will create a motivation in your child, motivation that will become self-motivation. This is how the motivation will create a self-discipline in the child. And this is how the child, every child, will grow into a loving person that loves what they're doing, being, being their instrument practice, performance, their work, their involvement in their family lives, and anything that they do in their life. Because character first, ability second. I'd like to leave you with a quote from the book Nurtured by Love by Shinichi Suzuki. And uh, I would like you to think of the topic of motivation when I read it to you, because you can apply it to, every, to anything and everything. So here it is how it goes. A seed is planted in the earth. So the seed for motivation is planted in the air. The topic is how to create motivation in our children. A seed is planted in the earth. We don't see when the germination begins. That is the doing of mother nature. We have to wait patiently. We cannot dig up the seed to see whether it is really growing. To do so would be to destroy everything. Suddenly, a bud appears. What a joy and pleasure to watch it grow. At the same time, the root, unseen in the ground, is getting stronger and has the power to produce a big, sturdy tree. And in the same way, you can develop and help your child create a big, sturdy tree by you nurturing, watering, loving, and developing this attitude that I'm going to be motivate, motivated 
to love what I want my child to love later on. Happy learning, happy practicing, happy reflecting, happy nurturing. <laughs>